This is the Sunday School lesson for Sunday, November the 19th in the year 2023. It comes from 1 Samuel 18 to 23 and the memory verse is John 15, 12 and 13. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And this was Jesus talking about how he laid down his life for us. But in the same way, Jonathan lays down his life for his good friend David. After David has killed Goliath, um, King Saul was determined that David was going to live at the palace with them. And um, Jonathan and David, Jonathan is Saul's son, became very close to each other. And Jonathan gave five gifts to David. He gave him his robe and his tunic. He gave him his belt. He gave him his bow, like his bow and arrow. And he also gave him his sword. Remember we said there were only two swords in all of Israel? He gives his sword to David. He really, really loves David. And um, David was very successful. And the women started singing when David would come back from battle. Saul has killed his thousands, but David is tens of thousands. Saul has killed his thousands, but David is tens of thousands. It made David, Saul feel very jealous. What, the people think that he's killed more Philistines than me? Well, they like him better than me. What more could he have but the kingdom? Well, 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 what am I going to do about David? But David was his bodyguard, and David was definitely the person that could calm him down whenever the whole evil spirit came, and he would go crazy. So he would start going crazy, and David would play the liar, and it would settle him down. Um, he two times one day when David was playing the music, Saul picked up his spear and hurled it across the room and tried to pin David to the wall and kill him. And David got away from him and Saul picked up the spear again and threw it at him again and almost got him. David got out of there fast. Saul had two daughters, their names were Merib and Michael. And in the beginning he promised David he could marry Merib, but then he didn't follow through on it. And then he had someone tell David, if you kill a hundred Philistines, Saul will let you marry Michael. And David thought, hey, I'm a poor man, I'd like to marry Michael. So he went out and killed 200 Philistines. And um, Saul became more and more afraid of David. David, Saul told his men, if you see David, you just kill him. But Jonathan warned David that Saul was trying to kill him. And then Jonathan went to his dad and said, Dad, you can't kill David. David's on your side. Remember, he killed Goliath. And then he talked to Jonathan, he, David, he talked to Saul, and he got them both back together again so they could eat at the same table without being mean to each other. But soon after that, David was playing the harp again, and Saul picked up his spear and threw it at David again. And this time, David just got out of there, and he went home. He went home to his wife, Michael, and Michael said, I'll help you escape. So she put an idol in the bed and put a pile of uh, goat hair on the top of it, made it look like David was sleeping in bed. And then she let David out the window and he escaped. And the men came from Saul, because Saul had said, go, go, to, go to Michael's house and get David and kill him. And <coughs> when they came for him, Michael says he can't come, he's sick in bed. So they went back to Saul and Saul said, carry the bed here, I want David dead. So they went to carry the bed and David wasn't in there. He had escaped. And Michael made up an excuse for why he's there. And then David went to his good friend Jonathan and said, Jonathan, we have a problem here. Your dad is trying to kill me. And Jonathan said, no. My dad would never kill you. If he, if he was going to kill you, I'd know about it. I know everything about my dad. David said, no, he's trying to kill me. He says, this is what we'll do. You go to the New Moon Festival, 
And if your dad says anything about me, you try to make peace again. And if you can't, then you come and tell me. Jonathan said, this is what we'll do. He said, you hide out here in the field and I'll take a little boy with me and I'll shoot arrows. And if I say to the little boy, the arrows are beyond you, too far away, that means you have to go hide and I can't get you back into the house with dad. But if I say, the arrows are on this side of you to the little boy, then you'll know it's safe for you to come home again. So Jonathan goes to the banquet and he, his dad just ignores the fact David's not there the first day. And the second day he says, where is David? He says, oh, he wanted to go up to his brothers up in Bethlehem. He wanted to eat with his family for this feast day. And Saul got really mad at Jonathan and almost killed Jonathan. He said, don't you know you can't be the king when David's still alive? We have to kill David. And he said, but dad, you can't be so mean to David. He's so kind to you. And Saul wouldn't listen to any reasoning. So Jonathan pretended that he was going to go out into the field and just shoot arrows. And David's hiding out in the field. And he takes a little boy with him and he shoots the arrows and then he says to the little boy, the arrows are beyond you, further out than when you are. Go out there further and you'll find them. And then David knew that it wasn't going to be safe for him to move back into Jerusalem and be in the palace any longer. And then Jonathan says, take these arrows and my bow and take them back to, my, to the house and I'll be there in a little while. And then David comes out of hiding and they just hold each other and kiss each other and cry on each other's shoulders. And they know that they're not going to be able to be friends anymore because... Jonathan has to live with Saul, and Saul's not letting David get close at all. So um, they made a promise that if anything happened to either of them, the one would take care of the other one's family. And um, then a lot more things happened that I'm not going to tell you. But the part that I really, really want you to know is they were at a place and David is hiding in the woods and Jonathan comes and finds him. After Saul has been chasing David for a long time, Jonathan gets away from his dad, goes and finds David, and when he finds David, he encourages him. He lifts him up in the Lord. He says, now this is what God's gonna do for you. Don't worry about it, David. This is what God's going to do for you. He says, I know you're going to be the next king of Israel. And I'll be your helper, but you're going to be the next king. And my dad knows it too. And they made that covenant again, promising that they would always take care of each other's families. Let me pray with you. Dear Father God, sometimes we find a friend that's worth having. A friend that will protect us no matter what. A friend who is as close to God as we are and who wants the very best for us. We ask, O oh Lord, that as these kids find friends, that they find friends who believe in you and that they treat them with kindness and love like you treat them. In Jesus' name, amen.